Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shukra, and once again we're back at the wonderful Dancing Trousers Cookery School to meet Alexis. We've been away for a while, so I'm rather looking forward to this. I've no idea what we're going to cook today, but I do have to say that it's been enormous fun doing these lessons with Alexis, because amazing though it may seem at my incredibly advanced years, I am actually doing some fairly regular cooking now as a result of her tuition. Um, now, remember, you can uh, find us on Twitter at Cotswold Explore, uh, on Facebook, of course, and our website is thecotswoldexplorer.co.uk. Or find our YouTube channel and subscribe to it, because it's free, and then we'll keep you posted on all the things we do. Let's go and find out what Alexis has in store for us. Alexis, it's lovely to see you again. And it's very nice to have you back. And spring has sprung. Isn't it wonderful? The sun is shining. And the morale is high. Everything's looking good. It's exactly. It's, uh, we've had a, sh a brief uh, a break, but it's lovely to be back in your wonderful kitchen. Good to have you. Uh, what are we up to today? Well, we are having our first foray into fish. Oh, great. Because I thought uh, it's the sort of time of year where fresh flavours are a really good thing to be thinking about. So I thought we would have our first go at some fish prep. Mm -hmm. And we'll work you up slowly to fill a fish. So right. today we're going to start with pin boning and then skinning a fish right. uh, and then we're going to turn our lovely mackerel into a Thai inspired uh, mackerel fish cake. Wonderful. There Wonderful. We go. Nice oh, flavours. Lots of nice flavours. I feel quite nervous now. I must oh say, no, no, no. No. <laughs> no, I promise. I will, I will oh. guide you gently. Uh, okay. So we've got different knives today because uh, for the work on the fish I'm going to give you a filleting knife to right. use. So we'll just talk briefly about this and the difference between a filleting knife and a chef's knife is that a filleting knife is bendy. It's got lots of nice bend in the metal and that's because it means you can work along the length of the fish without spoiling the texture of the flesh. So right. the bendiness is really important when you're doing fish work. Mm. But I'm going to get you started on the preparation of the other bits and pieces for the fish cake and the reason is rather than make lots of washing up we'll use the same board. If we did the fish first it would be slightly oily and messy from having prepped the fish first. Right. So it makes sense to do your veg prep ahead of time. Absolutely. So, understand. I mean, this is one of those things around planning when you're cooking. What yeah. makes sense to do first rather than make lots of washing up? Yeah. So, you are going to chop a bit of coriander, which I'm a massive fan of coriander. I think it's right. a lovely, lovely herb. And the interesting thing about coriander is the strength goes from the root to the stem to the leaf. The strongest part of the herb is the root, mm -hmm. which is used a lot in Asian cooking. Mm -hmm. Next strongest is the stem, and the least strong is the leaf itself, but it still has a lovely flavor. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm going to get you to do, and I will just briefly demonstrate and then hand it over to you. The nice thing about this is because they've got stems you can hang on to, you mm -hmm. can make a nice little fat sausage and for this we are going to use your normal chef's, chef's knife, knife because right. we don't need to move on to the filleting knife until we do the fish work so make it into almost a, a, a cigar like that mm -hmm. and then just chop through and I would say then chop through again because we don't want huge bits of coriander in our fish cakes but if you stop at the point at which you really start to hit the stems so that in the main you're doing the leaves I think that yeah. would be excellent okay so that's your first job brilliant okay let's see whether we can do this so bunch that in that's it and then it's that process that's isn't it? it perfect right um, that's yeah. yep that's it there's probably a little bit more on there that you yeah. can take, yeah. Okay. But we got plenty, so you can come back for a bit more. That's grand. Don't like that. Yes, that's lovely. I'll take those away. And we're going to do 
four fillets of mackerel. Now, mackerel is a lovely fish. I think it's a very underrated fish. It's yeah. native to our waters. It's sustainable. Uh, it's, it's inexpensive. It's very beautiful fish, actually. The look of it is yeah. lovely. And I think it has yeah. a great flavour. And, of course, it's very good for you. Full of, full of omega-3. All those wonderful oils. All those oils that are very good for you. Yeah. I think we might have, just so that we've got enough to, to choose from, I'm going to give you a little bit more of the coriander. Because if we've got more than we need, we can always not use it. So if right. I give okay. you that little bit there to chop as well, that looks good. Lovely. Put the spare over here. Now, I've fished for mackerel in my Have youth. you? Um, I, it's lying caught, isn't it? Don't you? Don't you? Well, um, perhaps I suppose they must nest net mackerel as well. But well, I mean, now, I there's a thing. Yes, I don't know. I, I don't know. know. I should do, and I don't. But um, Yeah, but it's certainly in, the, in those days, just hanging a, a line with lots and lots of hooks on it over the side. And it could well still be Coming done. back with lots of mackerel. Right, I would there like you to now, having done the first bit of that, I would now like you to cut through again doing your pivot cut like right. that. Okay. Just backwards and forwards because obviously bits like that are probably a little bit on the chunky Super. side for, for a fish cake. Okay. I shall get you a rubbish bowl while you're doing that. Put your bits and pieces in. Oh, it smells good. It does smell wonderful. It's one of those herbs though, I think it's polarizing because you either love it or you find it rather soapy mm. um, and uh, my other half can't be doing with it at all but uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan. It's that big question of whether or not one tastes things the same as the next person. It's, it's, I don't it's think you, thing. I don't think you can because yeah. everybody's taste buds and everybody's um, uh, the, the way they they smell and taste things is different. Yeah yeah I think that's right. Oh Derek the there cat how nice Hello, of you Derek. to join us. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Derek the cat knows that there is mackerel yeah. on offer. So let's scoop up uh, your lovely uh, coriander and let's pop it into that uh, right. bowl over there okay. for now. So use your dough scraper, that's grand. Lovely. And our next right. Asian inspired ingredient is lime zest. So these unwaxed limes, the yeah. wax preserves citrus fruit. It doesn't do you any harm. So if you didn't get unwaxed ones, it wouldn't hurt you to zest it. Right. Uh, if it is on, um, has got wax on, I put them under a hot tap with a little scrubber over and the top. And that takes it off. Takes the wax it? off. How and do you actually tell when you when you pick it up off the supermarket? It, to be honest, it? they should be labelled. Oh, right, but right. you can tell because when they're waxed, they've got that rather lovely sheen. They look very attractive because yeah. it makes them slightly glossy, whereas this is slightly more matte. Right, so okay. what we're going to do with this chef is on the fine side of your zester you know the routine mm -hmm. keep the lime moving uh, and don't do the white layer of pith underneath because that's right. very bitter so all oh, right that's interesting so you really just want the very, yeah very the very surface. outer edge because yeah. the, the pith gives a very bitter taste to things how often do you replace these things this is so much sharper than any great well grind, that's great interesting I, I mean actually i haven't yet replaced one but there will come a point at which surely mm. the, the blades will have become blunt so i suppose right. i must have just kept had mine for 50 years or something. I like <laughs> these um, little handheld ones because these are rather nice. You get two different grades of, of grater on it, yeah. but also the little rubber foot rests and it, it, it keeps it, it, it safe. Really and then well. you can give it a good yeah. bang and get all the bits off the back. Yeah. I reckon that's probably that's enough. Give that a tap. Yep. Yep, that oh, smells great, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Yeah, lovely. Amazing. Right, let's scoop that lot up and into, let's right. put that in a separate bowl so that we can choose how much of everything we use. Right. Perfect. Okay. Lovely. Okie dokie. Delicious. Right. Oh, look. We'll have that bit for cash, look. <laughs> right, there we go. Okay. okay. So, now we're going to move on to the fish. So, right. all we're going to do, because our board has simply had herbs and bits and pieces on, is give it a little wipe down. There's your non-slip mat. You can... Right. I'm going to do this into the sink, actually, if I make a bit of a mess otherwise. So, let's wipe that down. And let's get our fishy friends out. So here we are. So I've got four mackerel fillets. Right. Mackerel is so beautiful. I just think the look it's of stunning, it is it? It's such a beautiful fish. Just to be clear, these are fresh mackerel, not fresh uh, mackerel. No, no, no yeah. just fresh okay. mackerel as it comes. Um, mm. There we go. Gosh, they are. It's such mm. a pretty fish. Now I am going to show you a couple of techniques, which is why I've got four so that I can show you on one and then you can do all the rest of them. Right. So the first thing I want you to do is simply run your finger down the middle of the fish. Right. Okay. Oh yes, I see. Goodness. 
Little bones? Yes, right, lots okay. of bones which are called pin bones yeah. um, and they're actually quite sizeable um, mm. and with any kind of fish you want to get rid of those because nothing spoils a fish meal like finding a bone. No. It then makes you anxious about the rest of the meal so mm. we always need to get rid of them. There are two ways of doing this and I shall show you both of them. Right. So the first way is using fish tweezers mm -hmm. which are made for precisely this purpose don't use them on your eyebrows right. um, and what you do is you locate where the pin bones are you get a jolly good hold of it you pull it out and mm. if you see that's really quite a sizable bone. bone you really yeah. don't want that in your in your meal no. now here's the critical bit that people often don't know about little pot of water wash the bone off into the water because if you then go back in you've got the first bone stuck on the tweezers you then yeah. shove the first bone back into the flesh and you get in a bit of a muck yeah I'm really so right. okay. that's the first way of doing that's it so tip, have mm. a go do a couple for me and then i'll show you the much quicker okay. <laughs> Possibly slightly lazy way of doing it, okay. but there we go. Yes, oh, I see. Yes, it doesn't. It, it doesn't actually necessarily come off very easily. I see what you mean. It sh it should it do. Should, so. Maybe I'm just being a bit lazy. Right. Now. Pin bones are at the top end of a fish, they're, they're at the head end. As yeah. you get towards the tail, they disappear, there aren't any. Right, but okay. as you can see, satisfying though this is, it's very time consuming. Yes, absolutely. Were this a side of salmon, it's absolutely what you would do because they're very big bones in a salmon, they're very easy to get out with the tweezers. Right. And also salmon is fiercely expensive. Yeah. However, given that mackerel is a reasonably cheap and cheerful fish, mm -hmm. we're going to do a different technique, which is much faster, which is called right. a V-fillet, and I'll show you how okay. to do that. You so, want to stop now or do what? Yes, well, right, there let's, are a let's more see things. how well, we, I think there's one more, so we'll do this one completely as a pin bone, so there's one up there, right, okay. so you can get that out, All right, that's it, lovely. I see, yes, that's it. I just simply missed it. All right. And then we'll do the different technique for the, the next couple. That's it. I think that let's, probably Let's is. do a quality control check. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think that's pretty good. I think there is just one or possibly two lurking yes, see, they do. at the top. So we're going right. to have, there we are. Right. Okay. So they are, there's one lurking right in there. Ha ha. Right. Okay. So that's pin boning, so right. that one is done. Mm -hmm. Here is the much quicker way, slightly wasteful, but because it's a cheap fish, we don't mind. And this is right. called a V-fillet. So what you do is you have your fish laid out like that, uh, so north to south, mm -hmm. and you slightly tilt the blade of your knife so that you're making a valley down the middle, and you right. go one long stroke yeah. down the fish like that. So not sawing, but one long stroke. Yeah. Then you turn it this way up and you do exactly the same thing down the other side, like so. Right. There's a man at the door. <laughs> <laughs> and then, if you would like to pull that piece away. Yeah, okay. Oh, I see, that's right. Gently does it. It just comes away perfectly. Right, like now that. quality control we'll check that while I that. answer the door. We'll <laughs> Thank you very much, mm. thanks. Right, okay. So what we've got then is just a, I mean that you've removed most of the, sorry. We, sh the we should have removed all of them, have we missed right. any? I just wonder whether there's a little something going on there. Yes, you might be right. So mm. pop your, I, I think it's very tiny if it is, it's just a little yes, bit, but little that's a, bit. as you can see, a much, yeah. much faster yeah. way yeah. of doing the job. So. Your go. Right, so okay. here we are, two to do, and I'm going to let you V fillet both of them because life is too short to pin bone. Right. So okay. you can crack on with V filleting. So what you call north south is well, wide bit at the top. Of the yes. Side. Now I would I would have it exactly straight like that. Okay. So slightly tilt the blade. That's it, and right. do a nice sweeping movement all the way down. Beautiful. And you've judged that really well, Robin, because the trick is not to cut all the way through the fish and end up with two pieces. I that's, didn't notice that you hadn't gone through that's the That's it. You're so. doing that really nicely. Well, all the way down so that, that you create a down. nice V-shaped piece. I'm not sure whether it messed at the bottom or not. No, we'll that's see. fine. And gently does it. You should be able to just pull that. Yeah, I didn't get the angle. There we go. Look at that's that. That's not bad, Oh, like a pro. Right, into the rubbish. 
quality control, check it, make sure there aren't any bones. Yes, that works, isn't that Nicely brilliant? done, sir. Very do. nicely done. So you can do this one. He's on a roll. I'll tell you what, though, Alexis, one day I'm going to have to get you to teach me how to sharpen your a knife, because that is so sharp. Well, particularly with fish filleting, you've absolutely yeah. got to have your knives razor sharp, uh, because fish flesh is so delicate yeah. that if you end up hacking at it, it will just turn into a puree and you will spoil it. And that's very depressing. It. And I, I, this is just brilliant. It just slides through. Well, we'll have to bring your knives over and I'll teach you to yeah. use a butcher's steel. <laughs> we'll do okay. that one week. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. Lovely go. job. Well done, sir. No, so that is, that that's is great. Very and clever, to be very honest, clever. that's what they'd be doing in a restaurant because there is not time no, to be so pinned. Not a mackerel or something no. tiddly like this. If it were, if it, as I say, if it's a salmon, then yes. Now this is the one I did, and I was being a bit too mean, you see. So I didn't go mm. quite deep enough down the side. You're quite right. So that's where our tweezers come in, and we can just take out those last few with Finish the tweezers. Off. When I was training, um, I did a fish dish in one of my exams when I was doing my cordon bleu diploma, and I. Was was so determined that there wouldn't be a bone in it I took my own eyebrow tweezers in <laughs> and used them I have to say I did have to throw them away afterwards but right so right. Okay. that's job number one job yeah. number two is we're now going to skin this fish right. because we want the flesh only to make our fish cake with so we're going to take all of these off the skin so again I will do one which yeah. leaves you which leaves you three more to do for this, I like to work from the tail to the head. So we have the tail over on the left, the head end, the thicker end on the right. right. And again, I'll use a different knife. Um, you get a purchase down at the tail end by inserting your knife and almost immediately turning it so that the blade is facing to the right and the knife is absolutely flat on the board. Right. And if you can see, I've moved it so that the handle isn't actually hitting the no. board so it's clear of the board so that I can be really really flat yeah. and then keeping a grip on that skin you I can only describe this as shuffle you right. shuffle along <laughs> with your knife really really flat to the board keep shuffling keep shuffling keep shuffling along keep shuffling along and of course the skin is fairly um tough so it uh, if we it were frying this in a pan it was it would be it would be fine but because oh yeah. now look i've missed a bit there you go that's because i wasn't paying attention that's yeah, fine we can get we can get rid of that bit but um that's the idea is that we're shuffling along yeah. just to get that skin off so i'm going to get you to do the remaining three okay. i'm going to take off that last bit it's very it's actually very thin the skin on mackerel is very thin again if this were a bigger fish that would be an easier job to do if this yeah. were and a flat fish. Flat fish are really easy. Um, yes, because they're, yes, they're, they're really sort of, um, easy. leathery. Yes, they're yeah. much more leathery. So that's not a brilliant job. If anybody's watching, they're not going to give me a job in their <laughs> fish kitchen anytime soon. So just as a reminder, you're right. going to grab hold of that, turn your knife, and then shuffle, and then it, shuffle along. it along. Yep. Okay, so and the purchase comes from just yes. the small size. Just the tiny sliver at the end. That's and it. Then that's and it and really nice and flat now to the I board. Need to get hold of that. Actually, that's easier said than done. That's it. Keep that oh, knife flat, Robin. Will, that's will, it. Because if you tilt it up, you will yeah. you will lose some of the flesh. Yes, that's I it. see. Keep shuffling along. Keep shuffling along. <laughs> <laughs> You're moving further and further this way. <laughs> that's it. Now to hold the skin oh, rather than the fish. No, it's only because it, the fish flesh is quite is quite soft, and you will. I mean, actually, it doesn't matter because we are going to mush it in a minute. But I'm trying to teach you no, best right, practice. Right, that's nice to know how to do it. See, there once again, Robin has done a better job than me. <laughs> there you go. Look at oh, that. Good. Well done, sir. Beautifully done. So very nice. Very nicely done. Perfect. Okay. Right. Two more. That's it. Let's get them done. Right. Great so stuff. Really nice. Oops. So grab the tail, nice and flat, nice and flat blade. Blade yeah. should really be pressing flat on that. That's it. Yeah, pressing that's flat on the board. Mean. That's it. Shuffle along, shuffle along. <laughs> I have lost, lost a bit of flesh there, but no, not doesn't the matter. Lifetime. We've whoo, really lost yeah, that bit on the floor. <laughs> Derek the cat would have been pleased. Have been right, happy. excellent, well right. done, lovely job. That's another that's one. So yeah, last one to go. Yeah. Not sure this is exactly an audience participation. So sport, flat a knife, Robin. Get that yes, knife flat just, to the it's blade. Quite right. It's interesting how reluctant one is to. Yeah. 
Put and the, 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 knife, the knife will go because it's bendy, remember? Yeah, it's that's bendy. Stick, isn't it? So you've come I've up a little bit there. And no, I've that's. Done, uh, I've actually done this quite badly because this is. That's okay. Look, I've actually oh. missed one half altogether. See, that's because I said how well you were doing. That's, see, I yeah, cursed yeah, I mean, it. Didn't it's very kind of you to blame. No, blame no, no. Yourself, so I, what I we're going to do, what we're going to do, let's give this a go, is come in from this end, which isn't normally the end. I would go. Now, do you see the only difference between what you were doing before and what you were doing the last time is your knife wasn't quite flat. You were actually right. at a slight angle. So do stay really, really flat, flat to, the, to board. the board. Yeah. Okay. This, is, this is not a sushi salmon. It's not the end of the world if we lose a little bit of um, <laughs> fish on the, on the skin. No, right. Yeah. That's fine. We can work with that. I'm not bothered about that at all. And as right. I say, mackerel skin is soft anyway. Yeah. If this was yeah. something with a leathery skin, we'd be in a lot more trouble. I think this sounds like this is a great thing I can practice. It is. Actually, it is. And I've given you quite a tough gig to start with, and a lot mm. of other fish are a, a lot easier. Now, yeah. what we're going to do is separate this fish into two quantities, and we'll do this by eye. We're not going to weigh it. It's not, it's not mission critical. Right. So I want you to divide it into one, roughly one quarter and three quarters, just by eye, Robin, oh, right, will okay. be fine. Alright, okay. Well, I guess that's a little full fish, so let's assume that's about right. Yep, that looks good to me. <laughs> so, this bit here, we are going to chop reasonably finely. Now, I think it, you can either use your filleting knife or you can go back to your, your chef's knife, whichever's uh, easiest for you to use. But the pieces that we're after are going to be roughly this sort of size. I'm going to give you the chef's right, knife back. Now, yeah, that's okay. because we don't want our fish cake to be without any texture at all. Right. Um, so some of this is going to be in, in a format of uh, little little pieces. So, you know, sort of bite-sized little pieces like that will be fine. So okay. that's your next no, job. I certainly do. There's... Yeah, that's grand. And that just means that it retains a little bit of texture, a bit of interest when you eat it rather than just a, a, a puree of mackerel, yes, which isn't... Yes, is important, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That sort of thing. That for the whole of this pile? Yeah, the whole of your three-quarters pile. Right, Interestingly, okay. this is a, um, a fish cake that doesn't have any breadcrumbs in it. We're not going to fill it with any kind of um, uh, bread or right. any, anything of a, a carb nature. So, we mm. are using instead, as our binding agent, an egg white. And oh, I will okay. show you what we're doing with that once we've prepped the fish up. So basically all the texture in this fish cake is going to come from the fish Exactly. Itself. So it's, this is it important. really this is a is truly food. fishy fish cake. It's yeah. a very nice uh, starter. Also you could serve it as a main course um, right. depending on how big you made them but it's uh, yeah. very tasty. Great work. Lovely stuff. Lovely. Now, if when you look at that, there are any bits that are a little bit bigger than others, yes, just, 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 just cut through again, just, just, because yeah. you don't want to come across a really big bit in the fish cake that would make slightly the, confusing. Yes, yes. A bit odd, slightly odd texture. I might just simply do. Yes, please do. Down the middle yeah, there, that's great. Grand. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's super. Right. So your next job is these little bits here, you're going to cut very roughly indeed because they're going to get pulsed in the food processor. So right. very roughly okay. cut up because they, these are going to turn to a puree. Okay. So it just need to be yeah. enough for the yep. machine to get a bite on. And you can either, yes, hoik them up, pop them in there. That's okay. lovely. Okie dokie. Um, do you want to have a little wash up? I think I go and have that. a wash up. I will go and have a wash up. Look, everyone's disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> Ross will survive. Now, here's an interesting fact about washing your hands when you're working with fish. Yeah. It's better if you use cold water. Oh, really? And the reason is, if you use hot water, it opens the pores in your skin yeah. and the fish smell goes into your skin and it will linger for much longer if you wash your really? hands with hot water. So, better, so, better to wash yeah. them with cold water. That's a really good tip. Right, like there we go. So, I'm going, to, I'm going to steal just a little bit more of that to put in there. So, there we have your larger bits of fish yeah. and um, I would like you to tip your one egg white in there with that. Into the mixer. Into the mixer. Right. 
one egg right into the mixer. Perfect. And now we're going to just give that a blitz round. We're using the uh, mixing element of a stick blender. So this is the little mini jug that you get with a stick blender. Right. So yeah. because there's a bit of a technique to this, I'm just going to get the lid on for you. Um, you have to get it into the little grooves or it won't do its thing. No, that's not in either. There that's we go. Better. Voila. Yeah. Right. Bottom button and just pulse it a couple of times right. until we get something smooth. Yep, keep going. Keep going. Yep. And it will sort of thicken up to. Uh, that is, that is that's it. Lovely. That will do nicely. Right. Lovely stuff. So, one mixing bowl. Mm -hmm. Have a final feel and check of those to make sure that one's a little bit big. Right. Just make sure that you've got those to a uh, size that you like. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show Ross what that looks like. So it becomes like almost like a pate, actually. Yeah. Perfect. Now, all of this is going into your mixing bowl. So right. you've got your silicon spatula there. You can scoop it out. That's all right. We don't mind a bit of back to front. <laughs> and stuff. all of this is going in, so use your dough scraper right. for that. All of that lot's going in as well. Smashing. Now, Perfect. put in as much coriander as you think you're going to enjoy. So, right. okay. you know, so these are your fish cakes, you choose yeah. chef. Right. So Let's just do that. Yep, lovely. And likewise with the lemon zest, what you think I is... I sort of have a feeling the lemon zest is probably quite important. Lime I'm zest, I'm telling you a bit. There we go. Lovely. Like that. that gives it such a nice colour. Mm -hmm. Right, give it a quick stir round. Right. See what you think. And then instead of seasoning it with salt and pepper, we're going to use fish sauce because fish sauce is very traditional in Asian cookery. It's right. really their method of, of seasoning. Yeah. Um, and there it is there. Um, so, it's very strong. Fish sauce is fermented fish and salt. That's right. really all it is. So I'm right. going to recommend, that rather than pour it over there, we do it <laughs> over a separate container. Right. And I would probably add, because we can always come back for more, let's put one teaspoon in okay. and give it a stir around because it's very strong and we don't want to over season because we can't come back from that. No, That's perfect. It's, a, it's the, that okay. fundamental rule, isn't it? Yes. Once it's been put in, you can't yeah. take it out again. So okay, one teaspoon is going in there. Well, I put it, yeah, there we go, that's it, right. Lovely, give there that a go. stir. We will also give it a little pinch of pepper, which I will put in. Right. And there we go. That's a straightforward ground black pepper. Yep, ground black pepper. Super. Okay, job done. Right, right. Okay. next Thanks. job is you are going to, which is why I'm not letting you wash your hands because there's no point at this no stage, point, really. is Absolutely. you are going to shape these. So, oh, I, I took those out because they had a bit of skin on them. I was, yeah, I was yeah, doing okay. extra quality yeah, control. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so I'm going to get you a little bit of cold water in a bowl for the shaping of these. Cold now, water in a bowl. Yes, and I'll right, show you okay. why because. What the easiest way to shape a patty of any kind, and this might be a hamburger, it could be kofta, it could be anything that requires right. pressing together, is make your hands just a little bit damp, not soaking wet, right. just yeah, damp, just, yeah. Yeah. so that when you scoop this out, it doesn't stick to you too much. Yeah. Yeah. So then just form this into a little patty shape, and we're going to treat this as if it was a starter, so I right, would okay. say about that sort of size will do us nicely. And yeah. pop it on the tray because these are going to go into the fridge to chill once right. you've shaped okay. them. Right. So that's okay. it, hands damp. Yeah. And again, we're doing this by eye. We're not weighing the quantity because, no, you know, it's, again, it, it really doesn't matter. And that's an added complication that we don't need. Yeah, okay. Lovely. Something like that. Yep, perfect. I reckon we should get four out of this, yeah. all things being equal. Which is roughly one per side of 
Exactly. Yeah, one fillet per so person to, mm. to make the starter. I see we're doing a bit of a... <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. It's, it's, it's a bit strange, isn't it? I can't get it to hold together, but maybe uh, That's it. There we go. There we I go. think that maybe they made that a little bit too small. But this no, one's that's all right. Big, that'll be know. fine. That'll be fine. These are amazing because they feel kind of mud pie like. They're really oh, good. that sounds <laughs> tempting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like. There we go. Child, you know, right. You know, there we go. That, Lovely. So. Now, I'm going to take these off and put them in the fridge to just set up a little bit. Right. And you can have a wash up. I and Ross can do some television with, with magic. Water. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Alexis, well, we've been, well, how long have they been in the fridge? So they've had a little rest in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes, just to firm up a little bit. Right. Um, and now I'm just warming up a pan for you, um, and we are going to, they don't have anything on the outside, so this isn't one where we do flour, egg and bread crumbs. No, we're not I doing see. any okay. of that. This is a very um, pure... It's a very pure, ingredient. very pure fish cake, so yeah. I'm just heating up your uh, pan. Would you like to add just a little splash of the, uh, of the oil, a little bit of sunflower this oil? This is straight for sunflower Yeah, because... It, there'd be no point using olive oil, you wouldn't taste it, so you might as well use no, a good okay. a good vegetable oil. Yeah, that enough. should do you. I think we'll give you just a little bit more heat on there. So we'll allow that just to, to come up to temperature. Right. Now what you can do, if you're concerned about whether the seasoning is right, is set aside a little pinch of your mixture ah. and fry that off taste it and then if you think the seasoning needs adjusting you can do it before you form them into patties right okay so you before we got to this stage you would have a pan ready and you would yeah. just test a little bit and it's the same principle for meatballs or hamburgers take a little of the mixture fry it off taste it right okay. because at that stage you can make adjustments obviously yeah. once once you've committed once you've made the yes passes, yeah the passes, you can't yes, yes so okay, i'm with you okay so give that a little tilt robin just right. to just to get the oil moved around oh induction hob you've taken oh, it away sorry. so now no it's fine that, <laughs> it's the joy <laughs> of using an induction hob i don't know anything about these things you could one day i'll need to be you'll need something i haven't got one times but no uh, it's absolutely this, fine you have to keep it on the thing yes that's it that's has nice to have thing. contact to, to do its thing Right, I suggest okay. you scoop one of those up. We might right. just put a tiny bit more oil in, but that's getting, yeah, that's getting a, a bit of heat on it. There we go, and very gently pop that into the pan. Thank you may you. need to use your finger. That's it. Um, grand. That's it. Now, the temptation is I'll start moving that around. Yes. I'll start shuffling that round the pan. And that would be a bad idea because we actually want them to form a crust on the bottom before we start moving them around because otherwise they just will fall so to pieces. So it begins to hold them together. Yeah, so exactly. Be, okay, fair yeah. enough. So okay, so the critical thing is down. turning them over to yeah. form the seal on the other side, which Precisely. is then, then really will. But the great thing about fish is it shows you what's happening. So I'm, I'm, I'm just yeah. going to turn this around slightly. You can see around the edge the fish is starting to become opaque Changing because colour. we know mm. it's cooking. Yeah. Um, so we know that something's happening. I'm going to give you just a little bit more oil around here because we're using a rather larger pan than we would necessarily use otherwise. Right. Now I'm going to stop the thing from <laughs> doing by tilting it. There we go. Right, okay. So still avoiding fiddling about with it because the danger is you will simply cause it to fall to pieces yes yes absolutely i, I can see that but i would say if you get your spatula now and mm -hmm. very gently just go try under and this this one i'll try that one, one first it's the first one you put in just yeah, okay. gently see what's happening there we go yeah i would let's have yes might as well we can always turn it back That's over again yes, okay, yes. yeah there we go lovely and then let's and do the has, same it has it's held together nicely it. that's great same again lovely yeah, that's, that's looking awesome. great super yeah. job right super so now if you'd like to i'm going to be naughty and just move those slightly that's it right, grand okay. Now, what you can do while we're waiting for these to, to finish cooking, and I'll keep an eye on them, is mm. would you like to just prep a little bit of uh, lime to put onto the plate to squeeze with them? Right. So you're going to cut it that way down. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to show you something else. Yes, I've, I've, okay. I've thought again. I'm going to show you what they do in Japan, which is a way of actually getting a lot more juice out of a lime as well, right. which is rather than either cut through the middle like that, or straight down the centre. You mm. cut either side of the core. This is called the cheeks of the lime. Right, okay. So you go down like that. A, it's rather more attractive, and B, the interesting thing is, if you now squeeze that, you get lots of juice out yeah. because that very tough core is left in. So you right. can cut one of those in half, and then you can cut the other cheek off that side and do the same again. Brilliant. I will okay. keep an eye on this. You see, look, we're working as a team. There we go. Yeah. 
in the kitchen brigade working <laughs> as a team that's great I'm going to get some kitchen roll to just drain those on when they're done I do that's a really nice way of cutting a, a citrus and it looks it's more attractive does, doesn't yeah, it so absolutely. garnish your plate Robin pop right. those on there. Put them on there lovely beautiful oh it's like a pro right <laughs> So, have a little move of these fish cakes around in the pan, see what right. you think. Oh, they're, they're loose on there. That's on it, the they've ground. loosened up nicely, haven't they? Oh, I would give them, them another turn. Again? Yep, let's turn them back onto the... Oh, Oops, no, that's all right. <laughs> but yep, they're now holding great. together well. Yep, so that's the, great. Got no worries about that. They're not going to yeah. fall to pieces. They've Oops. coagulated. You pop your finger on, that's fine. As long as you don't burn yourself, there's that's there's absolutely there. fine. Let's give them go. another 30 seconds on that side and then flip them over one more time. Right, this okay. is simply to ensure that the heat has penetrated all the way through yeah, um, yeah. because it's a little difficult to tell. Um, it's very so difficult with, with meat, uh, sort of burgers and meats, so yes. because the fashion is to have them very thick these days, yes, which is, is lovely and delicious. Mm. Um, it's quite tricky to get them to cook in the middle when you and also it depends if that's what you're after because some yeah. people like their burgers quite rare in, yeah, so they don't yeah. want it to be cooked all the way through the thing that i would recommend is to buy a digital probe right, um, okay. which you can then insert into things and you can see what the temperature is right. inside give okay. those one more turn because that's looking a little um, bit smoky but, with, but that's with fish of course the the, yes, the problem is slightly less yes it. it's not a problem to do with it being slightly undercooked no. exactly no. those look great i would say 15 seconds and then we'll pop them out onto your onto your uh, onto bit of kitchen plate. roll just right, to get okay. any excess fat off. That looks good. Right, we'll call that 15 seconds. We'll call we? it 15 seconds. Let's <laughs> do it. There we go, sir. Beautifully done. They do look lovely. I mean, they look right. just Super. Delicious. Okay. So um, now I'm going to move these around to there so that you can now... Right, okay. Make your plate look very pretty. So I'm going to move those right over to you. Move this out right. of the way. Well, and then, if I do that, then Ross can actually see what I'm, what's going yes. on here. And what I would do is very gently turn them over so that you drain the other side as well of any right, excess. Okay. There we go. Holding together beautifully I now, aren't they? they? Yeah, are. they, really holding together well. Tell us here what you mean about the draining thing. Yeah. So you can see where it's Perfect. Draining. And then when you're yeah. ready, if you would like to position them okay. on your plate. And we'll do that very thing. And they've got that pretty flecking of green through them that looks yes. very attractive. Would you like mm. to put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil just onto the rocket to gloss it up a little bit, make it look more attractive? So give that a little dribble. This is getting distinctly chef -y. It is, just... it is. And I'm going, to, I'm going to make you do one more thing, which is just a tiny, a tiny pinch of rock salt, uh, right. sea salt, nice molden. Onto, again, onto the rocket. I, I just think I love a bit of salt, do yes, you? I We're fans agree. of salt, aren't we? That's it, perfect. Like that. That's it. There you go. Et voilà. That looks absolutely so, wonderful. So lovely little Thai inspired mackerel fish cakes. Yeah. Uh, beautifully done. From fillet to plate that you've done, sir. Well done. Extremely simple and absolutely looks absolutely delicious. They're, so the next move very is, to, is to try it. I think so. Thing. I think it would be rude not to. Yeah. So let's get you a knife and fork. I would give them a little squeeze of the lime. So squeeze one of your beautifully prepared lime right. quarters. Okay. Um, so, so I'm going to move that. Make that it, let's make it look attractive. There we are. There we are. Beautifully done. So, so a little squeeze, squeeze, little squeeze of lime. And it That's does just it. look there we go. This is coming out perfectly. Without actually going in your eye. Yes, <laughs> which is all, always <laughs> to, be, to be desired. Yeah. Right. You fire away. Well, you're you're the cook, so that. you, get, you get stuck in, sir. Look at that. It's look at all those wonderful it's, ingredients. And it's good it? for you, you see. And mm. it's good for you. So there we go. Oh. It's absolutely delicious. Mm. Mm. Isn't it good? It really mm. is. Very good combination of flavours. It's delicious. The texture's so good too. Yeah. The, the fish it's is not actually a quite mush. firm. In yeah. its, um, it's not at all a mush. Well, if we, if we show Ross, you can see that actually it remains identifiably fish mm. when you cook mm. it. So it's not just a mush that could be anything. And that's what I like about it. You've no. got the fish sauce coming through, that mm. tang of the coriander and the lime zest. Nice mm. little starter, it's isn't it? It's a very, very good mm. starter. And indeed, the seasoning is good enough. So that, that teaspoon was enough. It's plenty. No yeah, that's absolutely plenty. Yeah. Um, absolutely delicious, Alexis. Thank you very much. Well, well I'm done. I tried this out on my family. Great. Um, we have a rather wonderful travelling fishmonger that comes to the village once a week. 
Um, now I know what I'm going to go and try. It's not bad. Perfect. And the next time we're going to get you to fillet a, a whole fish. We'll right, work well, up I'll, to that. I shall, <laughs> I shall practice skinning the mackerel first. Very Thank you good. so much for that. Pleasure. That is absolutely wonderful. Well, goodness me, that was fun. I never thought I'd ever get to skin a fish. Uh, I'm clearly going to have to practice. But absolutely delicious fish cakes made in the most simple way. Um, I'm going to go home and practice immediately. I hope you've enjoyed that. Now, don't forget, you can find us on Facebook. You're on Twitter, at Cotswold Explore. Uh, you can find our website, which is thecotswoldexplorer.co.uk, or subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we will keep you posted on all the things we do. We'll be back here again next month, and uh, meanwhile, we've been filming some more uh, stuff in Bounton, uh, linked to Downton Abbey. Keep an eye on us. When we put that up, you will be interested, I'm sure. It's nice to see you. See you next month.